On November 29th, 2021, the world lost a beloved actress. Arlene Dahl was best known for her work as a Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer star who reached peak fame during the 1950s. She was one of the last surviving stars of what's known as the classic Hollywood cinema era. Her son, actor Lorenzo Lamas, announced her death on social media. At the moment, we don't know the exact cause of her death. But gauging by her age, it wouldn't be surprising to learn she died of natural causes. To pay our respects to Arlene Dahl, her family, and the many people she had an impact on, let's take a look at her prolific life and career. Arlene Dahl's Early Life Arlene Dahl came into this world August 11, 1925. She was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota, to Norwegian immigrant parents Adele and Rudolf Dahl. Her mother was a homemaker, and her father worked as an automobile dealer and executive for Ford. While her birth year is sometimes listed as 1928, the Minnesota Historical Society lists it as 1925. When she was a child, Dahl took dance and elocution lessons and enjoyed taking part in theater events at Margaret Fuller Elementary School, Ramsey Junior High School, and the Washburn Senior High School. Once she graduated, Dahl briefly attended the University of Minnesota while she worked various jobs, including working for a short time as a model for area department stores and performing with a local drama group. Her mother was active in local amateur theater as well. About a year after graduating from high school, Dahl moved to Chicago, where she found a job working as a buyer for Marshall and Brown. She then relocated to New York, where she worked as a model for the prestigious Walter Thornton Modeling Agency. In 1945, she auditioned for and landed a role in the musical Mr. Strauss Goes to Boston. She then appeared in the play Questionable Ladies, which got her seen by a Hollywood talent scout. Dahl scored her first, although uncredited, bit part in the 1947 film Life with Father. The same year, she was given the lead female role in My Wild Irish Rose alongside actor Dennis Morgan. The feature proved to be her first big hit and led to her being offered a long-term contract with MGM. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First for more. And stick around to see why Arlene Dahl eventually grew tired of acting and transitioned into the world of business. Dahl's film and television career in the 1950s After being noticed by Hollywood talent scouts, Dahl signed with MGM, and in 1948 she was given a supporting role in the film The Bride Goes Wild. She then played the female lead in the Red Skelton comedy A Southern Yankee later that year. Eagle Lion Films hired her to star in the female lead role in the 1949 film Reign of Terror. The same year, she performed opposite Van Johnson in the drama Scene of the Crime. She followed that turn up with roles in four 1950 films, Ambush, The Outsiders, Three Little Words, and Watch the Birdie. Besides The Outsiders, all these films were box office successes for MGM. MGM then gave Dahl the leading role in a couple of B-films, including Inside Straight and No Questions Asked. Both of these films failed to turn a profit in 1951. Dahl was then signed to Pine Thomas Productions, where she subsequently was cast in the swashbuckler adventure film Caribbean in 1952. She then hopped to Universal to co-star alongside Alan Ladd in Desert Legion. She then starred in two more Pine Thomas features, Jamaica Run and Sangaree, both of which hit theaters in 1953, the latter of which starred Dahl's future husband, Fernando Lamas. Her next feature, Here Come the Girls, saw her starring opposite Bob Hope. She then reunited with Lamas in the film The Diamond Queen, which was put out by Warner Brothers in 1953. The last project Dahl appeared in that year was the Jose Ferrar-led play Cyrano de Bergerac, in which she played the character Roxanne. In 1954, she played formidable character Carol Talbot in Fox's Women's World. She also played Rock Hudson's leading lady in the adventure war flick Bengal Rifles, which was released by Universal. Besides acting, Dahl started writing a syndicated beauty column in 1952, and in 54, she founded Arlene Dahl Enterprises, a company she used to market cosmetics and designer lingerie. It was also in 54 that Dahl began appearing on TV. She appeared in several episodes of Lux Video Theater, the Ford Television Theater, and an adaptation of Casablanca. She was also a mystery guest and panelist on the popular CBS game show, What's My Line? A year prior, she had hosted ABC's anthology program, The Pepsi-Cola Playhouse. In 1958, Dahl reunited with John Payne, whom she'd previously worked with on Caribbean, for the noir film Slightly Scarlet. She then appeared in several films in England for Columbia Pictures, including Wicked As They Come and Fortune Is a Woman. In 1957, Dahl sued Columbia for a million dollars, claiming Wicked As They Come's advertisements were lewd and degraded her, but a judge threw out the suit. 
She then hosted the short-lived TV program Opening Night in 1958 before being given the leading female role in the 1950 adventure film Journey to the Center of the Earth, in which she starred opposite James Mason and Pat Boone. While filming, she was injured on set, but even though she suffered for its production, the film ended up being one of her biggest career successes. 1960s and Beyond After finding herself typecast, Dahl left the film industry behind in 1959. In 1960, she played the role of the character Lucy Bell in an episode of TV series Riverboat titled That Taylor Affair. Later that year, she married Texas oil tycoon Christian Holmes. Afterwards, she announced her retirement from acting altogether. After divorcing Holmes in 1964, Dahl returned to acting in a supporting role in the 1964 film Kisses for My President. For the next few years, she worked as a lecturer and beauty consultant. Then in 1969, she appeared in the films The Pleasure Pit and Land Raiders. Shifting her focus back to business, she shut down her company in 1967 and began serving as vice president for the ad firm Kenyon & Eckhart. In 1970, she started working for Sears Roebuck as the company's director of beauty products, a job that earned her $750,000 a year, but she ended up leaving Sears in 1975 to start another short-lived company called Dahlia, which offered a line of fragrances. For the remainder of the 70s, Dahl made the occasional appearance on television in shows like Fantasy Island and The Love Boat, while also appearing on Broadway in the production Applause in the role of Margot Channing. In 1981, she declared bankruptcy after a series of failed business ventures and robberies. She appeared in the ABC soap One Life to Live between 1981 and 84 as the character Lucinda Schenk Wilson. In 1988, she starred in the film A Place to Hide. Her final film role was in 1991's Night of the Warrior, co-starring her son Lorenzo Lamas. She also ventured into the field of astrology, penning a syndicated column on the subject, before later operating a premium astrology hotline company. During this time, she published more than two dozen books covering the topics of astrology and beauty. Arlene Dahl's Personal Life and Marriages She married her first husband, Lex Barker, in 1951. They divorced a year later. Her next husband was Fernando Lamas, who she married in 1958. The couple had their child, Lorenzo Lamas, together. Dahl and Lamas got divorced in 1960, not long after her career had begun to slow down. She gave birth to a daughter, Christina Carroll Holmes, while married to her third husband, Christian Holmes. She had another son, Ronsevel Andreas Schaum, with her fifth husband, Ronsevel W. Schaum. She had six grandchildren in total and two great-grandchildren. In 1984, she married her sixth and final husband, Mark Rosen, a packaging designer from New York. She remained with Rosen, splitting her time between West Palm Beach, Florida, and New York City until her death, November 29, 2021. Now it's time to hear from you. What are some of your favorite memories of Arlene Dahl? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.